Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can all agree, Governor, you've got the job. Uh, uh, we're going to be, uh, in the spirit of the uh, Financial Times in 2013, uh, both analogue, I will be asking a couple of questions of the Governor, and then digital, and that we will be opening questions to the audience. Um, now, Governor, you've, made a, you've given a, a vote of confidence in finance, qualified, of course, on adequate re uh, regulation uh, and making the global finances, in your words, robust but resilient. But I am tempted to, to quote your countryman, your distinguished countryman, um, Wayne Gretzky, uh, the, ice, the uh, ice hockey player, who I believe said that it's important when you're playing ice hockey um, to skate where the puck is going, not where the puck has been. And my, my question is whether, um, for all the best intentions, regulators around the world, not just at the bank, are looking backwards and fighting the last war on le excess leverage, et cetera, rather than looking to the next crisis. Uh, first off, I'm very impressed by the uh, Wayne Gretzky. Uh, uh, it's truly cosmopolitan. Uh, uh, I think I, I'd, I'd say a couple of things. First. Uh, there are a couple basic uh, lessons from finance, and, and, and the first is that uh, uh, ultimately leverage gets you in trouble. So you, that, that lesson of warfare and finance is, is, is always valid. The, uh, related to that is uh, uh, problems uh, soon arrive uh, when one sees uh, sustained uh, above-trend uh, borrowing in, uh, by, by any mechanism. But I would say, without going into too much detail, because we don't have that much time, that there is a huge swath of work that I, I, I didn't uh, touch on, uh, which relates to the shadow banking sector. And, and, and the advantage of it is it's, not, it's looking at economic function as opposed to going to specific types of institutions. So it's about whether there are collective investment vehicles, whether there are, are, are vehicles that facilitate credit intermediation, such as insurance, uh, uh, credit insurance, monoline type insurance, but such as, as opposed to just going back to fix the monolines, or just going back in the first example to fix the sieves, which of course don't really exist anymore. Uh, and so that swath of work, uh, which is uh, going to mature over the course of this year, is, is, the, is the Gretzky work, if you will. It's, it's going to where the puck isn't yet. Uh, but in part because of what we've been doing in applying the lessons of the core lessons of warfare, to mix my analogies, um, will be encouraged uh, by the activities. So the activities we're doing on the reform side actually encourage some of the other. So no hiding place for shadow banking. Uh, no, no, uh, and the, the objective is to turn that from, in our parlance, from shadow banking to market-based finance. And, and one of the themes of what I was trying to say is that good markets are transparent, uh, they have robust uh, infrastructure. They are structured in a way that uh, is continuous, so they, they aren't uh, uh, discrete. Um, and unfortunately, much of shadow banking doesn't meet those criteria, and so we will move it in that direction. Uh, let me phrase the question somewhat differently. Some politicians in this country have identified what they see as a trade-off between greater stability, brackets, more capital, and growth, that is, more leverage. Now, do you accept that trade-off, or do you think you've found a way of resolving the tension? No, I, 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 uh, I've been very fortunate in my timing because my, my colleagues and Andrew and uh, Charlie are here today representing them, uh, and they're very much part of these decisions. Uh, they recognized, uh, through the FPC of uh, the Bank of England, uh, that um, the trade-off is not there if, if the core institutions are inadequately capitalized. Uh, and through a series of uh, efforts, uh, most notably earlier this year, where they got a lot of noise around them from uh, maybe some of those same politicians you're, you're referring to. You're referring to uh, the I, comments about the capital Taliban. Well, I, well you, you can refer to them, and I, I can just leave it out there in the, in the ether. Um, but the core point was that unless financial institutions are adequately capitalized, they don't go out and search new business. They're looking over their shoulder. They become fundamentally risk averse, in part because their investors are creditors, uh, and, the, and they themselves know this. It's, it, it is interesting that, uh, and, and I don't think this is a correlation, this is just a correlation, I think it's a causation, that once the core of the system here reached the, the FPC's 7% threshold, which is a fairly demanding threshold, once it reached that associated with leverage, uh, that we started to see a, a growth again in, uh, in credit. And do you believe that the, this argument actually 
is being resolved by the numbers on the ground, the data that Britain has turned the corner in terms of its economic performance. I, th I think, and, uh, and Charlie mentioned this yesterday, I certainly agree, one of the reasons to think there could be some, uh, some sustainability, some traction in the recovery, is that the core of the financial system here has gotten a lot better. I won't say it's fully healed, but gotten a lot better, and, and, and the rebuilding of capital is a big element of that. But just a year ago, I think there was a, a consensus, even at the Financial Times, that the financial system and the transmission mechanisms for credit were essentially broken. Do you believe that's, that's still true? I, 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 it's, it's, it's substantially less true. It's certainly not, uh, not broken. It's not, uh, it's not operating as well as it ultimately will. Uh, the, the financial transmission mechanism. Uh, that's why we still have funding for lending in place. Uh, that's why, in some respects, why we still have uh, exceptionally accommodative monetary policy. That that healing process still has to uh, proceed for a while. But what has changed is uh, that at the core of the system, uh, the core system is functioning. I'll make one final point, if I may. One of the things we shouldn't measure, though, for a, a sustainable recovery in the UK is an aggregate growth in credit. This is still an economy that, where there is a large uh, uh, and desirable deleveraging uh, of the economy. So we're not necessarily going to get the aggregates grow, growing. What's important is that the new businesses uh, and, and the young families are able to get access to credit. So was that a full-throated endorsement for help to buy? Uh, that was, uh, boy, I, I didn't uh, touch, touch it there at all. It was a full-throated endorsement for uh, funding for lending. Um, and uh, for the FPC's effort to fix the core. And bankers are telling me that funding for lending really is actually making a difference, much maligned in certain quarters at the beginning. I think the, um, it makes a difference for those. Uh, it makes a difference because it, plus a few other things, uh, have substantially improved uh, the overall funding markets. Look, funding, funding's come down 250 to 300 basis points uh, at the core of the system. Funding rates, that's helped very much by Europe but funding for lending played an important role in that. Now, you did give a full-throated endorsement the role of the City of London, um, but figures this week, and the Deputy Governor, Charlie Bean, cited the relatively poor, slightly worrying performance on the export of financial services from the city. Can you explain what's going on, or is this a temporary phenomenon? Well, I, there's, there's two things happening. One is that uh, the overall level of, uh, of cross-border capital flows, and I, I, I touched on briefly in the speech, ha have gone down uh, substantially since, uh, since the crisis, down more than 50%, almost 60% on some measures. That's pure cross-border flows. Uh, a lot of that's in Europe, but there's more uh, transatlantic and, uh, uh, and developed emerging market. Um, some of that, in fact, a substantial proportion of that's actually desirable. This was short-term wholesale finance between banks in Europe. We know how well that's worked out. Uh, it was structured products from the U.S. Uh, back into Europe as well. Again, that's not something that's necessarily desirable. The, what it's shrunk down into, though, is a core of more sustainable flows, which we would expect to grow from there. Now, whether or not uh, U.K. institutions uh, maintain market share or increase uh, market shares up to them, what we have to do is organize the system in a way that is... Uh, uh, ensures that it's, it ensures domestic stability, and we, now, can do, we think we can do that. Um, before I open questions, uh, no conversation with the Governor of the Bank of England and the Financial Times would be complete without some reference to Europe. Um, you studiously avoided any reference, Governor, to the question of banking union. Do you believe that if banking union does go ahead, that the, the role of the city is secure, that we will not be discriminated against? by that deeper integration in Europe? Well, I, it goes to uh, international engagement. It goes to engagement at European level. Uh, it's something that uh, uh, all the governors are very focused on. Uh, it's one of the advantages of John Cunliffe uh, uh, coming in. I, myself, the, you know, I, I say the first uh, outward phone call I made was to Mario Draghi uh, as governor. The first meeting I had was with... You took over from with, as the head of the FSB. Head of the FSB. Uh, uh, first meeting, with, uh, one of my first meetings was with Michel Barnier. Uh, I am vice chair of the ESRB. I go to the general council meetings. We, and this is, this is true of my colleagues in their, in, in their settings as well, uh, and will be true up and down the, the, the chain in the Bank of England. And the, the way to make this work is, is to be engaged. Uh, and that means that uh, we have the dual structure 
where we are the we are the supervisor here. We are the macro prudential regulator here. We make the ESRB work. We make the general counsel of the ECB work. We make the commission work in a way that uh, uh, suits UK financial services. But the only way to do that is is to be engaged. So no empty chair policy being pursued by yeah. the governor of the Bank of England.